Hey guys, welcome to this introduction to Material UI. In this video, I'm going to go over what Material UI is, how you can use it in your React projects, and why it's useful. This is really intended for someone that has heard about Material UI, but has never used it before, and wants to start using it in their React apps. So first of all, what is Material UI? Material UI is essentially just a UI library that allows you to reuse their components, and their components were designed with something called Material Design. Material Design was made to be sort of a best practice design uh, system when doing a lot of front end development. So as you can see here, they have different systems on how they believe typography, for example, should be displayed on the screen. And if you go to the actual Material UI documentation, you can click on components and you can see a list of all the components you can use from. If you've ever used Bootstrap, it's quite similar. For example, if we wanted to use something as simple as a button, we can come over here to their buttons page and we can see examples of exactly what type of buttons they offer and code that shows us how to use it. If I were to refresh the page, there we go. Everything's styled properly now. And additionally, you can click show full source to actually see see what their source code looks like. So let's go about implementing it into a React project. You can see here, I'm just on codesandbox.io and I have a very simple React project set up. First things first, let's add code, uh, let's add Material UI as a dependency to our application. On codesandbox.io, I can simply click uh, add dependency and search for at material uh, UI core and I can install like that. But obviously, if you are uh, building an application in your terminal, you can just do npm i slash save and then type at material dash ui slash core. And that will install, oops, that will install the base material UI library for your project. So let's go ahead and let's make a button. I'm gonna get rid of all of this text here. So we just have a blank application. Um, and let's take it from here. So the first thing I'm going to, oh, let's just uh, open this up and make it a bit more friendly. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is let's import a button from Material UI. So whatever the component name is, I can uh, destructure it from the default export. So I can type button and then from and then at Material UI core. And we can see here, now I can just straight up use their button component, and I can write something like, this is our first button. And voila, I can see our button is here. Now, it sort of doesn't look that much like a button. If I were to hover over it and click it, then I can see it's a button. But right now, if it's just on the screen by itself, it doesn't look like much of a button. Let's see what we can customize. So if I were to scroll down to the button component uh, page, I will be able to see their API documentation. And let's look at how we can read this. So the first thing on every uh, API documentation for every element, every component, is going to be a list of all the props you can possibly pass in. So let's look at some of the different props. Children will be there for almost all of them. Classes, you can overwrite. Uh, this is a bit more advanced if you want to overwrite any of their CSS. We'll go over that. Um, component, and then we have the actual button specific props, like for example, disabled. Let's try passing in disabled and see what that does. Or first of all, we can see that disabled is a Boolean, so we can set it to true or false, and it is by default set to false. Let me zoom in so you guys get a better view here. Disabled is by default set to false. If it is true, the button will be disabled. So I can do something like disabled equals true, or actually, if you just want to set a value to true, I can just go ahead and just pass it in, sort of like a shorthand. And you can see here now, I'm not actually able to click this button. So that's sort of cool. Now let's go to something like full width. So if I set it to full width, I'm sure we can all guess what that will do. It will simply make the button span the entire thing. So you can see here, uh, while the text is still centered, the button actually spans the full width. Now let's scroll down and we can see here we have a, a prop called variant. The default for variant is text, but let's make this default uh, so set to outline. So it's a bit easier to see on the screen. So variant, and let's make this to outlined. And just like that, we now have button that's a bit easier to play with. Um, and I believe we can also set the color. 
Here we go. So these um, color values don't look too uh, interesting, right? You have something called default, inherent, and primary and secondary. Let's go ahead and set this. Uh, let's go ahead and set the color of our button to something like primary and see what that does. As we can see, it's create it, it sets the button color to this uh, bluish figure. Now, if I were to go ahead and set it to secondary, what would the result be? It sets it to this red color. Well, where is Material UI pulling all these color from? So let's go back to the documentation. Material UI actually has this really cool thing called theming. So if I were to come here, we can see, uh, actually, let's go ahead and search for their actual theme documentation. And we can look at something called their default theme. All of their components, when they are deciding what color it should be, how the text spacing should be, uh, the fonts that you use and all of their components, all of it, the default values come from this thing called a theme. And this is one of the biggest points of Material UI. You can actually customize all of these themes yourself and overwrite any of the themes. So we can see here, this is what the theme object looks like. The first thing we have is something called breakpoints. And one thing you should know is that Material UI is responsive out of the box. So as we can see here, as we make the screen smaller or bigger, it actually uh, decides how to display the button. It won't do anything weird like cut off half of the button. And all of that comes from these breakpoints. Um, as you can see here, these are pixel values. So an extra large screen is defined as one that is the width is greater than 1920 uh, pixels um, for width and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And each each component will have separate base breakpoints uh, depending on these. You can go ahead, you can overwrite those if you wanted to. You have mix-ins, um, but what I really want to focus on are two in particular. One is palette and one is typography. Chances are these are the ones you're going to be changing the most. Now, palette will show you essentially all of the colors and all the different hues of those colors uh, set for all the default values. So for example, in primary here, if I were to open this up, I can see primary, um, the light is set to uh, this hex value, main is set to this hex value, and dark is set to this hex value. If you were to uh, set, for example, button color equal to primary or secondary, these are the values that it is actually pulling from. So when I set um, color equal to secondary, it's actually gonna pull this secondary uh, main value uh, from it. So let's go ahead and try overwriting one of these styles. So the first thing we're going to do is let's create a file called theme.js. And actually, so now what I can do is um, I can import a function called uh, make, I believe. So let's triple check uh, MUI theme. So create MUI theme. So here's an example of how we would do it. Let's go ahead and copy this example, uh, whoops, there we go. And let's export this theme, export default theme, like that. And let's change our palette, so our secondary, we can actually, uh, if we didn't uh, want to use their built-in colors, so we're getting these colors from Material UI core slash colors, if we didn't want to do that, we could set it to like, for example, like a hexadecimal, uh, value, which like, for example, this I believe is gray, but let's go ahead and keep this. It's pretty clean. So now in our index, we need to pass a theme provider in to our actual application. So we can go to the material UI docs, we can search for a theme provider. And here's an easy example of how it's passed in. So we can go ahead and first of all, import our theme provider into our index. We can then go ahead and copy how they are using it. So above our app, we can say our theme provider and then um, theme provider. And lastly, we got to pass in the actual theme, which we can just import theme from dot slash theme. So this will be importing uh, the actual theme that we used uh, the MUR library to create. And as you can see, our button is now green. We have our button set to color as secondary. And over here in our theme, we overrode the secondary color as green. If we wanted to change this to blue, we can go ahead and I'll actually even just import blue. Let's see if it'll auto import for me. Uh, here we go. I could just import blue. And just like that, 
it, we change it. So a big part of Material UI is that if you are building this for a company or a brand or anything else, if you're building an application and you want to build off of Material UI components, you can customize all the colors and um, all the colors and all of the other um, elements such as typography, which if I go back to default theme, you can see here all the typography is also overridable. So for example, uh, for h1 elements and stuff like that you could override uh the font the default font families the font weights the line height the font size the letter spacing everything to fit your specific brand now the other component i quickly want to touch on um there are as you can see a lot of different components when it comes to material ui but the other most important component i can think of is something called typography typography is essentially where all your text is going to be in a traditional app you would pretty much if you wanted to have a title make some h1 tags and be like hello there typography is something that allows you to overwrite uh, to do this but in a cleaner more programmatic and uh, a easier way that is actually in line with your uh, applications um, typography standards and and font standards so I can, let's go ahead and import ty typography we can actually add it into here so typography and let's go ahead and replace this hello there and these h1 tags with a typography And we can say hello there. And you'll notice it's going to be a lot smaller and the font is going to be uh, Roboto because I believe the default font uh, family for all typography is Roboto um, or Roboto. I never knew how it was uh, pronounced. But now let's go to the documentation for typography. You can see there's a good amount of things we can actually customize if we scroll down to their API. So for example, um, one big thing is the color. So we can change this color to be equal to uh, primary and it will take the primary from our theme, which is purple. And note that if you haven't overwritten something, like for example, if I were to delete primary here, it would just default to whatever the previous primary was. In Material UI case, uh, case the default primary is this shade of blue. Um, so when you make a palette, uh, when you are overriding styles, you don't have to worry about changing everything. Now, the other thing we can do is all, uh, we can change our font to be in line with all these different variants. So obviously you're probably familiar with things like H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, because these are all, the tags you can have in regular HTML. So if I wanted this to be a title, I can set the variant equal to simply h1. And there we have it. Our text is now there. Now, the last thing I want to show is how to actually overwrite some of these styles using Material UI's Make Styles hook. Now, this is super helpful. So first of all, let's go ahead and look at the Make Styles hook. The old way of doing this would be passing a higher order component with a, a, a component called a, you, with styles. But now uh, Material UI has released a hook called make styles. So first of all, and if you're um, used to any uh, styling embedded in actual uh, React components, then this will look very familiar to you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import this thing called make styles. And then as you can see here from this example code, we're going to make a variable pull called use styles and we're going to pass in any styles that we want. So let's go ahead and make some styles like for example, example, uh, let's say our hello there style. And let's, um, in our hello there style, let's make it so that our font, what can we change here? Font style is equal to oblique, which I believe just makes it look more italic. What I can then do is in my actual component, I can say const classes equals to use styles and I call it as a function. And then over here for typography, I can pass in my class name equals to classes dot hello there styles, uh, whatever style I want it to. And just like that, all the styles are being passed in. If we wanted to change the color to like red or something like that, we could add it in here as well. Um, and if we wanted to do something like change the font size to like 30 pixels, we could also do that here as well. And we could do this for as many things as we want. So I can do something like button styles. We can make the color like green. And then down here, all I have to do is give my button a class name of classes.button styles. And uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, forgot the equal sign. Cool. 
and just like that it'll change the color inside i think if you wanted to like change the outside color you would have to maybe change the border let's see if i change the border to zero if it'll like straight up delete the border oh don't forget the comma um yeah so it would get rid of the border so um and then you would have to do the same for the on hover border and that's pretty much just how you overwrite any materialized styles that you want there are also other ways to do it for example if i were to go to buttons um, there are a couple of different ways to override CSS styles. Um, if we go to the bottom here, you'll see that you can uh, actually target uh, these styles by the actual um, by their actual class global class names that Material UI assigns them when they're being rendered. But I find this a much easier way. And usually, if you're designing a site to spec with um, standard Material UI um, standards and components, then you find yourself using that a lot less often anyways. I hope this va this video gave you a lot of value, and if you found value in it, please consider subscribing and liking. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and I'll see you guys in the next video.